Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Oh, we're rolling, okay. I always have to double check because I am never, never quite sure <laughs> on these sat chats. So, uh, back from vacation, um, the last time I recorded a sat chat was actually two weeks ago. So this is the first time in two weeks I've had makeup on and I'm always a little worried because it's like I put makeup on, it's like, man, it's like I forget how to do it. And you know, so if I look a little bit like a clown, then I apologize because yeah, I'm a little out of practice. Um, I did, I brought makeup with me on vacation because I thought that I brought my good camera, the one I'm actually filming on right now. And I thought that I would try to get some good like photos for Christmas cards and, um, yeah, I never, uh, I got lots of photos of the kids, so that was good, <laughs> but I didn't get any, um, any of us all together, uh, but that's all right, that's all right, because I did get lots of photos of them. Um, I feel great to be back, uh, really needed the, the, just a week away in the woods with my family, that was nice, and, um, I'm feeling very refreshed, and when I was preparing for my vacation, I actually had, enough um, videos done so that I could, I didn't have anything I actually had to do for YouTube that next week. And so I plan to come home and work on the glass painting class, which I am about 80% done with. Uh, so I'm so excited. I'm hoping to launch next week, uh, probably like the end of next week. I'm hoping, fingers crossed. Uh, I'll show you a sneak peek actually. So this is one of the projects from the, the glass class. It's gonna be painting glass objects in watercolor. Uh, I'm really excited. Uh, I have been planning this class since January. I've been like working it and reworking it and changing my mind. And I basically wanted to kind of distill all of the basic concepts and put together a class that would teach you how to paint anything you want in glass and uh, not have a bunch of fluff, just be really, um, really concise and uh, kind of break down the kind of rules and um, things that you can reproduce over and over again to get reliable results. And, uh, and it took time. It took time to get it together. It took time to find enough quiet time in the house to re to record because you know the first half of the year it was well it was it was loud renovations and then it was coronavirus and the kids were home which my studio is in the basement so there's all kinds of um noises from upstairs. If somebody walks through the living room, I can hear them. If somebody um, is listening to loud music or is singing or playing the piano, any of that stuff, it's very loud down here. So uh, it was very challenging. I've had a lot of early mornings and late nights to record during quiet times and I'm, it's going to be, it's going to be really good. I can't wait to launch it. I hope everyone, um, especially everyone who's been waiting and asking for this class is, is excited to see it. So uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited. I'm, I'm almost done. So um, this is nice. I really needed that week off and I really should make a point of doing that a couple times a year. Maybe not going out into the woods for a week, but you know, just uh, just taking a break, which is hard when you work from home. And I'm sure a lot of people are um, are finding that because so many more people are working from home right now uh, or they have their children at home and they're trying to teach them. I know school, it's still up in the air. They don't know what they're gonna do for school around here. We are the next to the lowest cases of coronavirus per capita in the country right now, Maine is. So um, I'm, I'm really proud of that. Uh, not that I had anything to do with it other than, you know, I wore a mask and didn't go anywhere. <laughs> you know, I went to the woods for a week. That was my contribution. Um, but I'm really, I'm really happy about that. So I'm hoping that means that kids can go to school safely. I don't want them to go to school if it's not safe. Uh, my daughter's school has a plan. They're gonna go like four days a week, but, but only the school will be open four days a week, I guess. and they'll, uh, the kids will go two days work at school and two days work at home. So I think they'll probably maybe use Wednesday to clean. So send like half the kids in on Monday and Tuesday, and then they have Wednesday off and then send the other half of the kids Thursday, Friday, and the Monday, Tuesday kids will watch the same classes that the kids are at school. I think they're gonna just run webcams while the kids are in, in class. So um, whether they're watching the teacher from their desk or home, they're getting the same lesson. That makes sense. I mean, that makes sense because I mean, how in heck do people, does schools do this without hiring twice as many teachers? I don't know. Um, my son's school doesn't really have a plan. I'm fortunate that my kids are all teenagers and they're they're pretty self-directed. So uh, I think it'd be very difficult with young children. I my heart goes out to all you moms and dads and grandparents with little kids at home that you have to teach and and everything. That's a. Uh, I think that would be really, really 
um, really hard, definitely. Um, so, crafty stuff. I'm trying to think if there's anything new crafty. Oh, I had a very sentimental week, I have to say. So, when I went out, uh, as you know, I had that big, like, flurry of, like, cleaning and organizing. And, you know, at, at, I was thinking about that. Every time before I launch a class, I go through a huge, like, uh, cleaning frenzy and decluttering frenzy. And I think what it is, and I, and I record stuff ahead of time so I can have time just to focus on a class that I'm recording. And I think it's probably because, you know, I got to get the house to like, you know, to like as least amount of stuff as possible, as clean as possible, because I know it's going to build up while I'm working on my class. And I just need that buffer. That must be what it is. Or maybe it's just the way I clear my head before I start a big project. But I noticed that like before I've uh, recorded any classes or gotten ready to launch a class, I've done like a huge, like almost like spring cleaning. It should be like house clean. I should, I should launch two classes a year, like equidistantly apart so that I can get my house really clean <laughs> because that's for whatever reason, that's part of my process, my artistic process. It's like doing some like rage cleaning. I don't know. Um, so anyway, when I was cleaning, I was cleaning up the utility room in the basement and I found this box of magazines that had been donated to the library and the librarian, this was like the previous librarian, I didn't know what to do with them, but she, she knew I would enjoy them, but they weren't something that they would like add to their stacks because they were old um, art and crafts magazines and there was like uh, altered arts and expressions and all these Stampington ones. Well, I didn't realize there were altered arts at the bottom of the box. And so I'm like, well, I'm gonna grab all those and bring them with me to read. And they were all from like, I would say around 2006, 2008. Um, and so I was probably just too busy with a little kid, with my little kids to, um, I didn't subscribe to any of those magazines and I hadn't read any of them. So it was really neat to look through there, but I didn't know a lot of the old companies and it was very, just very sentimental to like read these, read through these magazines that are like 12 years old and 14 years old and remember these companies that I loved, especially in like the mixed media space. And it was just, uh, it was just very sentimental. And I started going on my phone and looking up any of these companies to see if, if uh, any of them were still around. I was surprised at how many were still around, honestly, um, or that, that had been, their lines had been bought up by other companies so that they could, um, they could keep producing them. And there was one company, Stamp Francisco, I think it is, who um, bought a bunch of different lines and they do the stamps on demand. So when you place an order, they make the stamp. So they must have bought all like the steel plates or something. And I thought that was so cool that you could still get some of those, um, those awesome older stamps because, I, I think that stamping like in the early 2000s, the 90s, I feel like the stamps were much more varied and interesting and um, weird. And you know, now uh, the stuff you see now is very pretty and it's lovely to work with, but it's also very kind of like mainstream middle of the road. You don't get the weird stuff, except for like maybe Lost Coast Design. They have some really weird stuff. Um, you don't get as much of the quirky weird stuff that you, that, I don't know if it was more popular, but that's what you saw. Like, I guess it was before stamping became mainstream and kind of like, uh, kind of, kind of ebbed into the scrapbooking lane. Um, there was some really neat stuff. And so I was feeling very sentimental. I was, I was looking at those old altered art projects because I love to alter books and do all those kind of grungy, messy projects that didn't really have a purpose. You just did them because it was fun to do them and they were neat when you were done. They were cool to look at. And I, I just really missed having that kind of, um, that kind of just like art for art's sake feeling instead of just like, no, I've got to get this done because this client is waiting for this, or I've got to get, use this here because, um, you know, or for whatever reason, whatever deadline I put on myself, uh, it was just, it was just neat to look back. And of course this was like, well, I don't know if it was really pre YouTube because YouTube had, it was just coming around. It was before I was on YouTube. It was before there was a, like really many crafters on YouTube or anything like that. So everybody was just kind of like hanging out, doing their own thing at their house, reading magazines. That's where they got inspiration or going to crops or retreats and going to stamp shows, stamp conventions. Oh my gosh, seeing the ads for the stamp conventions. Oh, you know, because they were huge. They were huge back then. I totally feel like I missed the boat. I think my first one I went to was like 2013. Um, and they, and I thought that was huge. I thought I was like, oh my gosh, I can't, where do I look? There's too many things to see. And they've gotten smaller and smaller and smaller every year. At least the one that I've, I go to the heirloom one in, uh, in, um, West Springfield, Massachusetts. 
uh, you know, they've gotten smaller every year, and it's kind of like, man, to go to one of those, you know, stamp shows that take up an entire convention center or multiple levels in a hotel, I mean, I can't even imagine how fun that would have been. Um, but that's all there was. People weren't, I mean, obviously there were websites in these magazines, so people were shopping online, but they definitely weren't doing it as much. They were, you know, they were getting out. It was more of a social, I feel like it was, there was more community. Um, even though now we can be in touch with millions of people, you know, with the click of our fingers, it sometimes feels like there's less community because we're not getting together in real life. Or maybe I'm just like, you know, looking back with rose-tinted glasses and with false nostalgia, I don't know. Uh, but that was just, I was having a sentimental week. And I uh, picked up a book on a, just on a whim, at the library had their used book sale they have every year during Old Home Week in my town. And um, and I usually like walk out with a stack of books, but I've been on a big cleaning spree. So I'm like, I'm not getting a bunch of books. So I bought, um, <laughs> so here's what I bought. <laughs> you know, so I bought uh, one book that was uh, The Book Wool by Hugh Howey. I actually have the um, it was, there were novellas, and, uh, there was, like, a free, the first one was free, like, when I first got my Kindle, and I saw that it was available for free, so I downloaded it, and I loved it, and I bought all the other novellas, I think there were, like, five in all, so I bought the other ones for, like, they were, like, a dollar a piece or something, and, um, it was such a great story, and then it eventually got published traditionally, and so they had the book there for sale, so I, I bought that book, and I bought the book Fried Green Tomatoes at the Whistle Stop Cafe by Fanny Flagg, I'd never seen the movie, I just thought that might be a really light, fun read on vacation, I was just looking for something light and fun, and oh my gosh, that book was so good, I enjoyed it so much, I, I'm gonna rent the movie, I thought that was so... It was a very, it was like, you know, a look back at, it was, it was, you know, people making the best of it in Depression era, um, Alabama. Um, things weren't, you know, they definitely, they took on some issues that were, uh, that were definitely, you know, touchy. They were, you know, dealing with segregation and they were dealing with the different things like that. And they didn't, they didn't rose tint it, but they, you know, it was obviously part of, part of, the time back then. I mean, this was written by a contemporary writer. Uh, but anyway, I thought the book was uh, was wonderful, and um, I highly recommend it. I I'm glad I bought it. I would read. I'll read it again. I'll definitely read it again. I was very sad when I was done. I definitely um, uh, identified with the main character of Evelyn, who was this. It's it goes back and forth between the modern time of all well, the '80s, 1987, I think, or 1986, somewhere on there, um, and you know, then the like the the 20s and 30s and 40s. So it goes back and forth and there's this uh, lady in the nursing home that's that's kind of telling this uh, 40, I don't know, 48 year old woman about like her when she was younger, her times. And uh, like Evelyn, the, the main character, she's played by Kathy Bates in the movie, which I haven't seen yet. But she's like, I'm too old to be young, I'm too young to be old. And it's like, yes, yes, that is it. I just really identified with that character. And, um, and it was good. It was nice. I liked it. I liked it a lot. Um, I also read the book. I finished the book Home Going. I started it before vacation. I really liked that. That was, uh, I bought a couple copies of that book because my daughters have to read it for AP English this year. They have to read it before they go back to school. And, um, and it was one of those things where I ordered two copies on Amazon. And then, you know, when you order a book on Amazon, they say you want to start reading. And, you know, so you can download the stamp. Well, I guess you could download a sample any old time for any book on Amazon. But I had the Kindle app on my phone. So I'm like, what the heck? I wanted something to read. And I started reading and I was just sucked in. And it was a story of these uh, two sisters that, um, no, I guess it's, it's, uh, well, you follow these, you follow this, this, this timeline of, um, of this woman in Africa and she has she has two sons originally I think and um and then the sons have they have daughters and one of the daughters ends up marrying a uh like a a slave trader and so she's living in this castle in Africa and she's like living upstairs and she's treated well and she has a child with him and that child is treated well and educated. And meanwhile, the other sis, the other girl has been sold into slavery. And then you see what her family, like how her, the generations that follow her in America, what happens to them and how they go through. And it's just this parallel of these two lives, these two family lines. And I have to keep, I had to keep flipping back to the front of the book to see the family tree and how it went. But it was just, I mean, that was, it was beautiful. It was heartbreaking. It was eye-opening. Um, it's a work of fiction. 
but um but it was very uh it it was an excellent book um uh, i'll link those down below ya gansai i'm probably mispronouncing her name i apologize um she is her debut novel and it was just it's just a gorgeous book highly recommend it and the other book that i um that i finished was and i'd started this months ago was uh, station 11 by emily st thomas i think I'll put the, I'll link it down below, and it's about a global pandemic, so I like the fun reads on vacation, let me tell you. It's about this global, global pandemic that has, like, wiped out almost the entire, entirety of humanity, except for, like, a very small uh, group of the population. Um, but it was, it was interesting. It, it, it did drag at, at parts, but that could have just been me and my headspace when I was reading it. Uh, but I'm glad I finished it, because I did enjoy it. Um, a lot of things I felt like it could have expanded on. There could have been, I think it could have been, like, a, a there could have been a sequel or there could have been a trilogy. And I also think it's probably a young adult book. It's probably not like an adult, like an actually like grown up novel or anything, but uh, that's okay. You know, sometimes you need an easy read. Uh, and, and that was it. So anything else weird about vacation? Oh, so I was cleaning out the fridge before vacation. I'm like, I'm bringing this stuff with me. I bought and paid for this salad. I'm bringing it. So I had this, like, this salad mix that hadn't even been opened. Um, and I brought it to vacation with me because I had a couple days left and and, uh, you know, cause, cause I had high hopes. I'm like, I'm going to be doing paddleboard yoga at sunrise out in the pond and I'm going to be eating my salad. I'm going to cleanse. I'm going to cleanse my mind. I'm going to cleanse my body. I, I sat around red, drank wine and, uh, you know, flipped through magazines. I did swim. I did paddleboard, but the salad, alas, uh, went to waste. I do feel bad about that, but I needed a week, man. I needed a week. Uh, so my pants still fit. So that was a good thing. I was a little worried. I was like, I'm not trying my pants on for a few days. We're going to be getting back on the, back on the, the train before that happens. Get back on the wagon a little bit. Um, but, uh, but shockingly, shockingly, my pants still fit after that. I don't think I went crazy. I definitely didn't go crazy. I'm a pretty moderate person when it comes to, when it comes to, uh, to food and alcohol and things like that. But, um, but yeah, I definitely needed a, a week of just letting the, uh, I don't know, letting the, uh, just letting everything just kind of relax a bit. Cause I just, I didn't realize how like rigid I am in so many things, like, you know, how, how scheduled I am, which you'd think, you know, flaky artist doing whatever she wants all the time, you know, but really actually, you know, I'm quite, quite rigid about a lot of things like, you know, my schedule and, you know, one glass of wine a week and, you know, da, 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 you know, all those silly things. Uh, so it was really nice just to do what I felt like doing, eat what I felt like eating, not counting any calories, swim when I felt like swimming, uh, plopping the paddleboard in the water and going out on that when I felt like it. Uh, did probably lay in the sun too much. That's, that's one of my uh, guilty pleasures is laying in the sun. I love it. Why does everything that is so enjoyable have to be so bad for us? I don't know. Uh, I did use some sunscreen most of the time during, you know, the 10 to 2 hours. I'm really bad about that. Uh, although I'm usually not out between 10 and 2 because I walk the dog, you know, first thing in the morning and I, and last thing in the evening. So, and I'm vitamin D deficient in the winter. So, oh, they, speaking of vitamins, I decided to, because I read the Fried Green Tomatoes book and um, the old lady at the nursing home told the Elevin that she probably had low hormone levels and she should get stress tabs. And I'm like, well, what is that? Stress tabs? That sounds fantastic. And apparently it's, so I looked it up. I'm like, I've never heard of this thing. It must be some Southern thing because the, the South is like a, a weird, mysterious, place. Um, I've never spent any time in the south and it just seems so different than the north. I'm like, well, I'm like as north as you can get in this country practically. I'm in Maine. So like I, you know, reading southern novels and stuff like that, it's like those southern people just seem so different. Um, so stress tabs, what are those? So I looked it up and apparently it's like a multivitamin. It's like, a, <clears throat> I think it's a multivitamin that's like uh, supposed to increase your energy, reduce your stress, uh, I don't, it, but it turns out it's just a complex B vitamin and I don't know if they don't make stress tabs anymore, but I was seeing them on like Amazon. They had wonderful reviews. People were like, you know, say they gave up coffee and like all this stuff. And I'm not like, you know, looking to give up coffee. I don't think I can do that to my family. But, um, so I got some B complex vitamins. We'll see how that goes. I feel pretty good. <clears throat> but then, you know, I'm kind of a hypochondriac, so I can easily be, um, uh, be influenced by placebo, which is fine because, hey, if placebo works, you know, even if it's just in your head and you feel better because you're taking these vitamins and you feel better, then you're less stressed because you think you should be less. Hey, if it works, it works. I don't care if it's placebo or if it's an actual, like, secret B vitamin mixture compound. Uh, but anyway, yeah, on the vitamin B. I decided while I'm at it, I might as well take some calcium and vitamin D because, you know, I'm a vegan, so we are probably... 
I'm not getting enough calcium, although I do drink soy milk, which is enriched. It's enriched with, with some B vitamins. I would occasionally take a B12 because I know that, you know, vegans don't get B12 in their diet. Um, and I was afraid of nerve damage. And um, my dad has MS and they had him on like B shots, shots of B vitamins for like nerve damage and stuff. So I do know that B vitamins have something to do with your stress uh, and your nerves and things like that. Um, so yeah, I'm sure it can't hurt. I mean, right. You're just going to pee it out if it's extra. Um, so that's it. I'm usually because I have such a good diet. I kind of like, you know, I got vitamins that I can't do anything. Um, but hey, I'm, I'm willing to try because I've been pretty stressed out. I've been pretty stressed out and pretty anxious and kind of depressed. So um, yeah, I think it could have just been exhaustion. Mm, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe she's born with it. Maybe it's quarantine. <laughs> Did you see that meme? I thought that was so funny. It's like, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, it was, it was maybe she's losing it. Maybe it's quarantine, like a spoof on the Maybelline ad. <laughs> <laughs> could be, could be. I haven't done any fun shopping and not that I'm a big shopper. I don't even, I don't even like to shop. That's the irony of it. It's like, I don't even like to shop, but I want to be able to shop. And I guess things are open, but, um, I don't like shopping. Although sometimes I just want to go and look around at stuff, but then I put my mask on and I'm like, well, this isn't fun. This isn't enjoyable. I'm feeling all sweaty and all like, you know, humid and, uh, you know, like I'm going to get acne because I've got this mask on. I don't know. It just feels gross. And so I was like, yeah, no, it's not worth it. I don't want to go. And then I feel bad for these businesses, but it's not like there's any local arts and crafts businesses around. They're all big box store. My favorite big box store closed. And um, that was AC Moore. And apparently there's a Michael's supposed to move in, but I don't know are they going to do that after like, you know, pandemic and like all of this. I mean, are people going to be buying enough craft supplies in rural Maine to, to justify that? I don't know. I guess it's not that rural. I mean, Bagor's not that rural, but still, I mean, is it like three craft store? Um, you know, can it support that much? I haven't been into Joanne's because um, it's, uh, I just haven't, I haven't, I have plenty of like fabric to make masks. I, I, I'm a, like a fat quarter junkie. That's, I like to do little projects. So I always have tons of fat quarters on hand. I don't buy large amounts of fabric without a plan, but I will buy fat quarters without a plan if it's a cute fabric. Cause I'll make a little, I don't know, I'll make a little like a pencil cape pouch or, you know, a, a head like bandana thing or some scrunchies or something, or the girls will use it. So, so I have those on hand cause I know I'll use them, but I don't, I don't keep big amounts of fabric for no purpose. Uh, same thing with yarn. I don't buy yarn without a purpose anymore because uh, it's so it's so unusual that you will find a pattern for something that you have the right amount of like yarn or fabric for. So you're always gonna have to go out and buy more anyway if you find a pattern you want to make. So you might as well just wait until until you're ready to make something. Unless you find a really good sale, then you know you gotta. You know, I can't help you there. That's that's where I get tempted. <laughs> uh, so I just don't go down the, the yarn owl Martins. I haven't been to Martins. Oh my gosh, I have not been to Martins since before the pandemic, which if you don't know what Martins is, then you're probably not from Maine. It's a, um, it's like this big treasure trove. You never know what you're going to find. It's like, uh, it's like a store about the size of, well, I don't know. I would say about the size of Walmart, but everybody has different size Walmarts in their, in their towns or cities. Um, but it's a pretty big store and it's got like everything from furniture to clothing, to shoes, to building materials, to books and some grocery items. It's just like this weird surplus place. They just like, like buy all the surplus and salvage stuff and you never know what they're going to have. But they do have an excellent fabric section. And by the way, I have no idea what it did to my arm in case you're looking at that like, oh my gosh, what did she do? I have no idea. But that darn cat that like, you know, chased my dog and she dragged me down the road and I sprained my wrist. That cat actually, we were walking by on the opposite side of the road. That cat came down the driveway, walked out into the road and was staring the dog down the other night. I was like, come on, come on, cat. We gave you wide, wide berth here. But anyways, yeah, I don't know what I did there. I tend to like walk into things. Um, no idea. <laughs> no idea what that one was. Uh, I probably banged into something at the camp because you know, you're walking through, you're not sure where stuff is and it's dark and that's probably what I did there. Um, what was I talking about? Oh, Martins. So, um, so I haven't been to Martins and that's always fun because they have, they always have a couple aisles of random yarn and they'll like, I think they must buy like last year's overstock of stuff because there'll be like a ton of Red Heart and Lion brand and uh, things like that. So sometimes I am tempted. I'll be like, I'll buy a bunch of things. I'm like, okay, I'm going to make a shawl. But the shawl that I have, yeah, I showed you the shawl on the other side of the room. Um, blankets back up to have been recording class stuff and I just want to be extra sure that my, uh, my audio was good. Um, so yeah, I already have a shawl going. I don't need any more shawls, even if I didn't have a shawl going. But yeah, I'll be tempted to buy some stuff there. So 
I've got to be careful. I've got to be careful with that. But no, I haven't even been to Martin's. That's always fun because that's a fun place to shop because you don't know what you... As long as you're not going for something specific, as long as you're not like, I need to go find a dog collar. I'm going to go to Martin's. That's a bad idea because chances are you're not going to find what you want, what you go for. But you will walk away. You will, you're unlikely to walk away empty-handed because there's... There's lots of goodies, lots of weird goodies there. It's all new stuff, but it's just, um, it's unusual things. And uh, and it's fun, there's usually a couple aisles of craft supplies and kids art supplies and games and toys and puzzles and um, a little bit of everything. It's a strange, wonderful, magical place that if you were ever in Maine, you have to go to a Martins. <laughs> but I haven't been there. Uh, they opened up and I was kind of like, I don't know, everyone's going to be flocking there because they'll be so desperate to get out and, uh, and then I just haven't, I just haven't gone. Um, so, oh, maybe, maybe I'll check it out. But then again, I think, oh, that's awfully selfish to go out and go, you know, go out for a joy shop when, you know, you don't really need anything. That seems very selfish. But then again, it's on the other hand, it's like, well, these people have jobs and they're supporting their families and the store, you know, is, um, is a family business and it's trying to stay afloat. So I don't know, I'm conflicted. Very conflicted. I haven't really shopped online much other than to um, just order stuff I needed, like stuff I couldn't get at the grocery store. Um, yeah, that's been about it. Luckily, I have like a huge stockpile of craft supplies and art supplies, so I don't. I can run my business for for uh, indefinitely, <laughs> indefinite times, I guess. I probably should look at my notes I took for this thing. This, this crazy video we, this crazy little chat we do every week. Um, oh, you know, it was kind of neat. Uh, so I was at the grocery store and usually, um, cause I'm so moderate, I will buy, I have a glass of wine a week, as I mentioned before, and I like Pinot Noir and I buy the um, Barefoot Wines, the four pack, it's like four glasses, basically. And, um, and yes, yeah, so I'll have one a week. So one of those little four packs lasts me a week instead of buying like a, a bottle because it would go stale. Well, um, and I was thinking, oh, it's too bad that it doesn't come in a box because then it would stay, you know, the boxed wine, so they stay, they don't get air in, so they stay fresh. Well, they have it in a box, turns out. I did not know this, so I bought that for camp. I still have some left, I'm probably gonna cook with it. But um, but that was, I'm like, you know, vacation's gonna be good because my favorite wine came in a box. And that tells you about how classy I am that my favorite wine is available in a box form. Ah, well, you know, hey, I know what I like. I don't know if it's good, but I know what I like. <laughs> uh, that's all I have for today. Keep your eyes open for the glass class. That's probably what we're going to talk about next week, amongst what other crafty adventures I have between now and then. Here's hoping some good ones. I've got some deadlines i got to do today. It's going to be another late night, so I'm going to let you go. Thank you so much for watching, and let me know what you think in the comments below. Love chatting with you. Until next time, happy crafting.